lot of big money has exited crypto during this bear market and even more following those twin SEC lawsuits that you mentioned. But here in Prague, the focus is less on markets and price moves and more on the developers building the root level systems like Ethereum, the EU's progressive and pretty groundbreaking moves on crypto regulation and the places where generative AI intersects with decentralized finance. But in Europe as a whole, fintech is an even bigger topic of conversation. Earlier this week, I was in Amsterdam for one of the continent's flagship fintech conferences, where there was so much talk about the general slowdown happening in the sector and how companies are cutting back their spend significantly because they just aren't seeing a return on investment. Case in point, you've got venture capital and private equity backers reeling from a dire slump in technology valuations and softer consumer spending. Even once richly valued business-focused fintechs have suffered. You've got Stripe that just announced a $6.5 billion fundraise at a $50 billion valuation, a 50% discount to its last round. Checkout.com experiencing a 15% drop in its internal valuation to $9 billion, according to startup news site Sifted. And when you walked into that money 2020 venue in Amsterdam, it was easy to see a clear trend. B2B companies like Airwallex, Pioneer, and ClearBank dominated the show floor, while those consumer apps such as Revolut, Starling, and N20 were nowhere to be found, Frank. So, Mac, I see you're out there. You're really getting your finger on the pulse of things. I want to ask you about the fintech landscape over there in Europe. It really seems to be more disruptive than what we've seen so far here in the U.S. Any talk on that front this week? Yeah, so we've seen this dynamic where fintechs in Europe have really forced big banks to revamp their offerings so that every bank has an app. There's budgeting controls, contactless payments virtually everywhere, so more mega digital disruption than what we see in America. And that's partly thanks to payments regulation in the EU. Things like open banking and the likes are now pretty commonplace after a lot of banks fought tooth and nail to quash those reforms.